Hello everyone, we're here at Camp Randall Stadium where Penn State just took down Wisconsin by a 28 to 13 final score. Uh, it was a lot tighter than the score would indicate. Wisconsin was leading uh, after the first quarter. Wisconsin was leading after halftime. Uh, a pick six from Jalen Reed kind of turned the tide in this one and then Penn State's offense woke up a little bit. Obviously the main storyline coming out of this one is starting quarterback Drew Aller goes down right before halftime with about a minute left in the second quarter, heads into the locker room, curses out a Wisconsin fan on the way out, um, and then coming out of halftime, comes out onto the field, starts throwing, uh, starts warming up, looked like he was going to come back in. but. Uh, I, I think he felt something on one of the throws because he walked over to Franklin, talked to him for a little bit, um, and then walked over to his teammates, was, was kind of dapping them up, shaking their hands, things like that. Looked like he wiped some tears from his eyes, so it seemed like they kind of shut him down. Um, seems a little bit more precautionary than anything. Feels like he could have gone, but he wouldn't have been 100%, so they felt like Bo Perbula was the better option because he kind of brings more mobi mobility in a game where you probably want to be able to run the ball well. Um, so I think that's why they decided to go ahead and make the switch there. Um, but kind of a lot of other storylines in this one. Lyle, what stood out to you today? I mean, obviously you talked about the Drew injuries, which is a lot. Bo came in, played, obviously really started well. the game one yeah. for three. Um, so obviously, you know, you bring some questions going in. Can he handle the moment? Can his offense adjust him with his play stop? But then he finished the game 10 for 13. 10, 11 for 13, excuse me, which is the most passing attempts that he's ever thrown in a game. Obviously, the knack on him throughout his progression and development is can he throw the ball? He's proven it as a runner. He's talked about it ever since he got to Penn State. But he did just that, do a couple of passes into really tight windows. Some that, you know, you, you're questioning, you're like, was that a good throw? But I, one of Harrison Wallace really stuck out to me. But I, he got the job done. He led the offense in the second half, comeback victory. Obviously, they had to do it again on the road two weeks ago against USC, and he played great. But he was Drew Aller wasn't the only injury um, for Penn State today. Starting right tackle, Anthony Donko, went down at the end of the first half, had his helmet off on the sideline, did not return. You saw Nolan Rucci come in in his place, obviously the former five-star, and just transferred from Wisconsin this offseason. Uh, so a bit of a homecoming for him, got his moments. Uh, obviously, he was talking to his bunch of his former teammates post-game. Didn't really play the greatest. Um, we'll see, obviously, how Donko's status is. Not necessarily a downgrade um, in theory, but Donko is more of a well-rounded um, tackle compared to Rucci has really struggled in pass protection so far. Some of those Wisconsin defensive linemen really got to him. And, but other than that, you saw Denai Dennis Sutton as well go down at the end of the first half. Obviously, star defensive end alongside Abdul Carter. Um, saw him coming out of the half. He got on the bike, looked good, uh, but then for first play, he can't, combined with Kobe King for a sack, immediately took himself out of the game, was ruled out on the broadcast. Seemed to be, um, obviously, I'm not going to speculate anything, looked like it was his right leg to his thigh groin area. Um, and then obviously, and then at the end of the game, we don't really know the severity of it. AJ Harris, cornerback, um, went down, got 10 to 2 on the sideline. Obviously, this is, I was like a minute and a half left in the game. So we're going to have to see what the status is this week. Obviously, James Franklin didn't really give an update post game and probably won on Monday like he usually does. We'll obviously it. Gonna, he's going to get asked on Wednesday. Hopefully he can provide an update. And that's not really a good time for Penn State to get injuries. Um, these are four really high-quality players. Obviously, Drew's their starter. Quarterback, the former five-star, he's improved so much from year two, one to year two as a starter. But Donko, Deny, A.J. Harris, these are all legitimate starters that have benefited this team tremendously and not the time for them to get the injury bug. Yeah, definitely a lot of key players going down, and Franklin didn't really give insight into any of them really um so those are all kind of big question marks heading into a huge matchup against ohio state obviously penn state will welcome the buckeyes next week uh that's what they'll turn their attention to in beaver stadium uh for a fox big noon kickoff which i know everyone loves everyone's very excited for that um but yeah a big matchup and obviously if drew's not ready to go for that one that you know that has a huge impact on the game for both sides um, obviously, if you're Penn State, you prefer Drew, who was playing very well before he got injured. I think he was 14 for 18 for 100-some yards and a touchdown. Um, looked like he was playing you know, really crisp passes, putting them in the right spots, things like that. Basically doing everything you would want to see from him uh, before he went down. So obviously, if you're Penn State, you would, you would like to have him against Ohio State. Um, but, you know, Bo Perbula, I think, played really well today and showed that, you know, you can win with him. Obviously, it takes a lot on the defensive side of the ball, and he needs some help from playmakers and things like that offensively. Um, but, yeah, if you're Penn State, I think you're really worried heading into that Ohio State game just because you don't know the status of a lot of these guys. And even if they do end up playing, they're probably not going to be at 100%. And so there's, there's, you know, just a ton of question marks heading into next week. But for right now, 
you know, Penn State gets the win in a tough environment. Um, we heard heading into the game, I don't think a lot of people were expecting the environment to be very tough, but but this place, it wasn't full at, it wasn't full at kickoff. Um, there, there was some empty seating in the student section, but it was full by the end of the first quarter. It got very loud at certain times here. Um, jump around was awesome. Had the press box shaking. We were we were a little bit we were a little bit scared for our lives up there. Um, but yeah, great environment tonight, and I think it definitely played a role. I think there were maybe one or two plays where, where Penn State had whether it was delay of game, false start, whatever, because of the crowd noise. I think it did play a slight impact today. So obviously not an easy place to win, especially you know in a night game. Um, and a pretty far travel for Penn State. Obviously not, you know, West Coast trip or anything like that, but still, you know, not an easy uh, trip to get here. And so Penn State, obviously you're happy to come out of here with the win. They cover the spread uh, for those of you who, who bet on the Nittany Lions today. Um, but but then again, with those injuries and things like that, I think there are, you know, some, some issues kind of that you come away with this one. Um, it almost feels like a loss in a way just because of, of all the injuries that you sustained, you know, James Franklin talked about it. Depth is going to be an important piece, um, especially, you know, if Penn State makes the playoff and they want to make an, ex um, an extended run in the postseason, you know, you're going to need as many players healthy as you can, as many depth pieces as you can to rotate in. Um, looking kind of on, on um, some other areas, though, wide receiver or just offensively, I don't think anyone really stood out to me. Um, Harrison Wallace, I think, had six catches for 50 yards, something like that. Nothing crazy. Um, Tyler Warren had, you know, a classic Tyler Warren seven catch game, but only converted it into about, I want to say, 46 yards, something like that. So not some huge numbers there. Um, both Nick Singleton and Catron Allen, I would say, struggled a little bit on the ground, on but the they ground. both they both made an impact uh, through the air. They both had some good uh, yards after the catch there. Nick Singleton obviously with the touchdown, the one-hander, and then Catron with the other one at the end of the game. Um, so some big plays there. Uh, defensively, Jalen Reed, obviously the pick six was, was kind of the story of the game for the defense. Um, a huge play when, when Penn State was kind of struggling. They had punted the ball five straight times and you know wisconsin wasn't doing much either on offense it had, it had kind of turned into a stalemate a little but, field position battle yeah it turned into you know a classic big 10 big 10 battle i wasn't sure if, if the score was going to change after that point but uh jaylen reed came up big with a pick six he looked really good today um i think he was like tied for second on the team in tackle or something like that um, with I believe five um, so he was definitely a big contributor today and obviously put some points on the board when the offense you know wasn't doing it so um, Jalen Reed took matters into his own hands there got some points on the board on the defensive side of the ball Penn State looked like they kind of gained some momentum off of that uh, even when the offense came out you know for the next drive after that they went down and scored so looked like Penn State kind of picked it up after that moment um, but definitely a big lull kind of in the middle of the game there with a bunch of consecutive punts and you know part of that you have to think is due to drew going down with the injury but i thought bo did enough today to get the win um and everything like that lyle any any closing remarks before we finish i this wasn't really talked about a whole lot but penn state got completely outplayed on special teams um and yeah. it started with the very first possession for wisconsin when they had the you know fake punt whatever when wisconsin's punter blanking on the name right now but just juked out aj harris when he Obviously, I thought it would—I thought it was a free block punt, but you know, tucked it himself and grass right in front of him, and and took it for the first down. I think that was just the story of the game on special teams because you saw Penn State was getting called for penalties on whether they were punting or receiving that extra that added yardage to the Badgers and negated yardage for themselves. Just a couple of really bad like things that you don't want. You got to clean up going forward, and obviously, it didn't really impact the game overall, really, because when by the time they got it cleaned up, it was just a matter of the flip in the field with the punting. But going forward, something to clean up. Obviously, you know, punt returning. I designed on Tracy, fine, and he broke one coming in for Caden Saunders. But you know, that got called back. His knee was down. Oh yeah, that was yeah, that was even the penalty. His knee was down. So it's just like little things like that can go a long way when the season goes on. Yeah, exactly. Um, if you're Pitt State, obviously, still a ton of things to work on. I still don't think they played a perfect game. I, at this point, I don't think they ever will. There will always be, you know, some things that go wrong. Obviously, whether it's offensive, defensive, special teams. Um, but yeah, obviously a big matchup coming up for Penn State next weekend. That's kind of the real one. That's that's obviously the biggest matchup of the season against Ohio State. So we'll keep you guys updated with, with any news we, uh, we hear regarding the injuries and things like that. And you can always find more content at our website. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe. And we'll see you guys next week. Thank you for checking out this content from Post-Gazette Sports. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. 
For all of the sports coverage the Post-Gazette has to offer, visit post-gazette.com.